Hello my dear children, welcome to your science class. So last class we start our new chapter that is 9th chapter. And in this chapter we are uh, learning about the living organisms or the biotic factors. Living organism characteristics or the biotic factor characteristics. And in the last class we learned one character that is all the living organisms are made up of a basic unit. A basic unit called cell and the cell is the structural and functional unit of a living organism. We learned that an uh, organism with a single cell is called yes unicellular organism whereas organism with many or more than one cell is called yes multicellular organism. So in this class we are going to learn the second character feature of the living organism. The second character is structural organization found in the living things that is the structural organization found in living things structural organization so structural organization is the pattern followed by the living organisms. We learned that an organism with more than multiple number of cells or more than two cell, more than one cell is called multicellular organism. So every multicellular organism perform a structural organization for performing a specific function. So the cells are categorized or grouped in order to perform specific function. So let's learn what is the structure of organization in living organism. So this is the structural organization shown by the living organism. Here it shows how a single cell is getting organized in, into an organism, a multicellular organism. So we have already learned that a cell is a basic structural and functional unit of an organism. So every multicellular organism's organization start with a single cell. Now, the second level of organization is tissues. Second level of organization is tissue. Now, what is a tissue? Tissues are the group of similar cells performing a particular function. So, tissues are a group of similar cells performing a particular function. So, such group of cells are called tissues. Now, what is the speciality of these tissues? That is, those group of cells will be performing similar function. So, what are tissues? Tissues are similar cells, similar cells performing, performing particular function, particular function. So, a cell is a single unit whereas a group of cells performing a particular function is called tissues. Now, the third level of organization is organs. So, we have learned about different organs in, the, organs in our body. For example, heart, lungs, eyes, which are some of, the organs, uh, some of the organs in human body. So, this organs is the third level of organization. So, what are organs? A group of tissues working together to perform a similar function is called an organ. So, what are organs? A group of, a group of, Similar tissues, similar tissues. So we know what are tissues. So a group of similar tissues performing a particular function in our body is called organ. So that is the third level of organization. Now the fourth level of organization is organ system. The organ system. So for example, so example, so for you. So for your easy understanding, I will tell an example. I will give an example that is, 
we know that mouth esophagus stomach intestine etc are organs or are different organs which perform similar function and it forms a digestive system isn't it so that is what an organ system is that is a group of organs performing a particular function in coordinating with each other is called an organ system so organ system is a group of similar organs performing a particular function by coordinating each other so that is what organ system is and an example for organ system is mouth esophagus stomach intestine etc all those organs are coordinating themselves in order to perform the digestion that is the digestive system they include the digestive system now all these organ systems combine to form an organism we know human is an organism so human contain many organ system isn't it respiratory system circulatory system uh, digestive system reproductive system so all this combine to form an organism so this is the structural organization of an organism so which is a basic unit of an organism that is a cell so similar cells performing a particular function join to form yes the tissues now what is tissues tissues are the collection or the combination of similar cells isn't it now the tissues combine to form an organ similar group of tissues combine to form an organ a group of organs performing a performing similar function combine uh, coordinate themselves and combine to form an organ system now many type of organ system combine to form an organism so this is so this is a common feature of a living organism that is they they shows the structural organization that is the cell combines to form the tissues tissues combine to form the organs organs combine to form the organ system and many organ system combine to form the organism so this is the second feature of the living organism so the first feature is all living organisms are made up of cell now the second uh point so the second character of living organism is this they shows the structural organization that is from cell to from a single cell to a developed organism now the third feature of the living organism is living organisms can move the third feature is living organisms can move now we know that all the living organisms are having <coughs> now we know that all the living organisms are having a feature that is they can move from one place to another based on their needs like shelter finding out food reproduction also escape from their enemies so the movement of an organism to one place to other is called locomotion locomotion now what is locomotion locomotion is the movement of one uh, movement of an organism to one place to another in order to the search of food uh, search of shelter reproduce and also escape from their enemies etc is called locomotion now how do this animals move yes animals like lion dog deer a uh, bear zebra giraffe humans etc move with the help of the appendages or the legs they have and few animals few organisms few insects etc move with the help of the wings like birds flies mosquito etc they move with the help of the wings now the organism like fishes or the aquatic organism how do they move yes they move with the help of the fins so such movement is called locomotion now do plants move yes though they cannot move from one place to another because they are rooted at a region they are rooted at their own place isn't it but since they can move their leaves they can they show the growth of their bark root etc so plants are also moving in a way though they are not moving to one place to another they they are leaves they are roots and certain plants like mimosa etc they are showing the movement 
when they are touched isn't it so plants are also moving though they are not moving to one place to another they can move their organs isn't it so such movement in plants is also called locomotion whereas non living things they cannot move the movement or the locomotion is a feature of living organism that is the third feature we are learning that is living organisms can move and this movement is called locomotion now let's learn the fourth feature of the living organism that is living things need food the fourth feature is living things need food so we know the growth of the body parts is a feature shown by the living organism isn't it so in order for the growth the living organisms need food now can we live without food no isn't it we cannot live without the food so likewise all living organism need food for their growth and development now do plants need food yes plants also need food isn't it the preparation of food by the plants is called photosynthesis photosynthesis so we have learned about photosynthesis in the lower classes and also in our last uh, chapter when we learned about the function of the leaves we learned photosynthesis that is the green plants are preparing their food with the help of carbon dioxide yes sunlight water etc isn't it and uh, and other minerals also so this is called photosynthesis and the photosynthesis is the pro, uh, process by which um, green plants pro produce their own food and these plants are able to produce their own food their own food themselves hence they are called autotrophs auto trophs now what now what are these autotrophs autotrophs trophs are the organisms which are able to prepare their own food themselves so green plants are autotrophs because they are able to produce their own food with the help of carbon dioxide water sunlight and other minerals by the process called photosynthesis hence plants are autotrophs now from where do other animals get the food yes all the animals get their food from the plants isn't it hence this animals are called heterotrophs 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 so what are heterotrophs yes all animals get their food from the plants and other animals hence they are called heterotrophs now what is autotrophs autotrophs are the plants are able to produce their own food hence they are called auto autotrophs heterotrophs heterotrophs all organisms all the living organisms produce their food the plants or other organisms hence they are called heterotrophs so that is the fourth feature of living organism that is living things needs food now the fifth feature of living organism fifth character of living organism is living things respire living things living things respire living things respire now do we respire okay now let's check whether we respire or not for that what i am making you do is when i ask you breathe you have to breathe you have to inhale the air and hold on for few second okay breathe okay children breathe hold on your breath yes how many second can you inhale and keep your keep the air like that only few few Yes, only for few seconds, isn't it? Now, what is breathing? Breathing is the inhale and exhale of air. Breathing. Breathing is the inhale and exhale of air. Now we know which is the organ used for breathing in humans and some other animals. Which is it? Yes, lungs. That is lungs. 
Now, how do fishes breathe? With the help of gills, isn't it? Gills. Few other animals breathe with the air holes. Air holes. How do the plants breathe? Yes, with the help of stomata. Stomata. So, whichever be the organism, they breathe with the help of this, this organs. What is respiration? Respiration. Respiration. Respiration is the process by which the living organisms intake the oxygen and releases the carbon dioxide by the breakdown of the food in our body. So this process is called respiration. Respiration is the intake of oxygen and giving out of the carbon dioxide. From where this carbon dioxide is getting, carbon dioxide is uh, released from the food we eat. So this process is called respiration. So that is the fifth point of living organism that is living things respire. The sixth point is living organism excrete. Point is living things, living things excrete. So we are learning the uh, difference or the characters of the living things that is biotic components. The sixth point is living things excrete. Now what is excretion? Yes, the removal of waste materials from the body, organism's body is called excretion. Now what is excretion? Excretion. Excretion is the process of removal of waste materials from the uh, body of the organism is called excretion. So we know that all the animals excrete and do plants excrete? Yes, the plants also excrete through the stomata and also the secretions like gum, resin etc. Or the, those are the products of, those are the excreted products of the plants. So plants also excrete all the living organisms shows this risk. Um, shows this excretion and the excretion is the process by which the living organisms remove the waste materials of those from their body. So that is a sixth point. And now there is four more features of living organisms that is, the that is the difference between the biotic and the abiotic factors. Those we will learn in our next class. And before concluding the class, I would like to give you a small homework that is in page number 82. There is two multiple choice questions given. Kindly go through the multiple choice question as homework and mark the answers. We will discuss the answer in the next class. See you in next class. Thank you.